Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Guys Tech. I'm Rob, and in today's video, I'll be going over our top 10 awesome tips you should be using when you build your home theater. So make sure you stick around until the end of the video to see our number one pick. Let's do it. Number 10 on the list is a good universal remote. In my theater, I'm using the Logitech Harmony Elite which allows me to control all of my components, lighting, streaming devices with just the push of a button. Now before I got the Elite, I was dealing with five or six remotes at a time, which to me seemed completely ridiculous. And not to sound too dramatic here, but honestly, this thing has literally changed my movie watching experience 100%. Now you don't necessarily have to go with the Harmony Elite like I did. In fact, some of the lower end Harmony remotes can pretty much do everything the Elite does, but you do miss out on some of the smart home integration features. And of course, there are other remotes out there made by other brands, but I personally haven't had any experience with them. But if you have any remotes that you'd like to recommend to everybody, go ahead and put it in the comments below. And that's gonna lead us into number nine, smart home integration. Adding smart home functionality to your home theater really opens up a lot of possibilities when it comes to integrating all of your equipment with a single interface like an Echo Dot, Google Home, or a Universal Remote. Lately, we've made a few videos on this exact topic, so go ahead and check them out at the end of this video. And now at number eight, we have acoustic panels and posters. Acoustic posters are a great way to tame those wild standing waves and crush those darn reflections. Now, you actually have a couple options here. You can either build or buy acoustic panels. The easy route would obviously be just to buy them professionally made right off of Amazon, you just choose your color, size, and you're done. Or you can go the route we did and actually build your own custom acoustic panels. They're actually posters too. These give a lot more flexibility. You can choose your own design, dimensions, and you can even decide what kind of sound dampening material you wanna use. Right now, we're actually working on a set of nine acoustic panel posters, including a couple really large posters for those slopes on the ceiling. So if you wanna see that, stay tuned. And now coming in at number seven is sub and room EQ. Room correction is actually really important because every speaker, every room, and every combination of the two are wildly different. Most receivers and processors nowadays have pretty good room correction built in. And usually all you need to do is hook up a microphone and start calibrating your speakers. Dirac is currently an industry leader when it comes to automated room correction but you can also hire a professional to make sure you get the best sound quality possible in your theater. Anyway, now you've got all your main speakers set up for your room, what about your subs? Subwoofers are really hard to get just right, especially without an EQ. If you have two subs and you're not careful, you could actually be canceling out one of them, which really isn't something you want. Now, sub EQ is pretty cheap and relatively easy, I have my subs running through a Velodyne SMS-1 for room correction, and I could hear a massive difference once I calibrated them for this room. The Mini DSP is also a great choice for people on a budget, and if you're interested, I'll leave a link to grab one down in the description. And now for number six, theater seating. Having the right seats in your home theater can completely change the viewing experience, as well as your investment in the room. The perfect theater seats are the right size for your space, can accommodate the needs of your family and don't interfere with the acoustics of the room. And you can also get them with tons of accessories like LED lighting, cup holders, USB charging ports, adjustable headrest, and the list goes on. In our theater, we don't have actual home theater seating, but they're all power recliners and very comfortable. In the future, we'd like to upgrade to a set of true home theater seats, but these work great for now. Now, if you want multiple rows of seats, then you might want to consider a riser. This actually raises the seats in the back by about a foot. Now, you can build them yourself or you can get pre-built ones. And some very talented people have even done things like putting subwoofers in and building folded horns to tune them down to super low frequencies. I want to give a special thanks here to Ghosty from the Build Montage Discord community for providing these pictures of his riser. All right, so at number five, we have high-end receivers, processors, and separate components. Now, a receiver is a great way to get started with home theater. It's basically the brains of your home theater setup, so you wanna make sure that you get one with pre-outs so you'll have an upgrade path 
in case you want to add separate amps in the future. If you're on a tight budget or you don't plan on expanding your setup at any point in the future, you can also get a receiver without pre-outs, but I really don't recommend it. And if you want to go with a step above your average receiver, you'll want to buy a processor, which is pretty much just a receiver without its own integrated amps. These offer excellent sound quality and more flexibility, but usually at a higher price because you have to purchase separate amps for every channel as well. And at number four, we have speaker placement. Believe it or not, speaker placement can make or break the sound of your home theater. For example, something as simple as towing in your front left and right speakers so they point directly at the main listening position can actually make them sound much more precise. And here are a few other general speaker placement guidelines. Pointing your center channel up toward the listener can make dialogue sound much clearer. Positioning your surrounds at ear level will also help with separation and immersion. Now if you only have one subwoofer, the best way to position it is to use a technique many people refer to as the subwoofer crawl. This consists of putting the subwoofer in your main theater seat and trying to get your son to start crawling around the room. Once that doesn't work, get down on the floor, crawl around until you find the place where the bass sounds the best and simply put the subwoofer in that spot. Now if you're going with two subs, which we highly recommend, the best way to find optimal positions for them is just to experiment. Putting them in the front corners of a rectangular room will provide the most bass throughout the room, but depending on where you're sitting or where your front channels are, that might not be optimal. At number three, we have bass shakers. You know, I always thought that these things were kind of a gimmick, but after trying some for myself, I'm really amazed at how well they perform. These bass shakers attach to any flat surface inside of your seats and hook up to any regular amp that can drive either a 4 ohm or an 8 ohm load. One really cool thing about these bass shakers is that I can actually turn off my subs, let's say at night while somebody's sleeping, and still get a feel of the bass in the movie without waking anyone up. I've also added this small line level controller made by MCM Audio and to me, this is a must have as it lets me control the intensity of the bass shakers right from my Harmony remote. And if you're interested in seeing how I installed these on my home theater, I'll leave a link to the video at the end of this video. And for number two on the list, make sure everything you buy supports the latest video and audio formats. 4K has been the mainstream for quite a while now, and in the home theater world, spatial audio formats like Dolby Atmos and DTSX are becoming very common. Prices are coming down every year, more and more movies are coming out in 4K and have Dolby Atmos and DTS soundtracks. My advice here is if you're looking to start putting together your own home theater setup, try to get the best you can afford right off the bat. Getting the newer equipment also means you generally have a better upgrade path if you want to expand your system over time. And finally at number one, try to buy refurbished or used. We know that this isn't for everyone, but the real value here is the money you save buying this way, you can actually buy more or better equipment. Buying refurbished items direct from manufacturers is a great way to go. Many of them still offer full warranties on their refurb products, but it's usually at a substantial discount over retail. And some of these things are just open box items, so you could get an item that's basically new. If you want to try to save even more money, you could consider buying used. The secondhand market is thriving and it's hard not to find something that won't both fit your budget and do everything you need it to do. Not too long ago we made a video on our budget secondhand home theater where we put together a full 5.1 surround system for under $200 buying used. So go check that out after this video. And that's it for my top 10 tips. If you'd like to add your own or you feel like we got this wrong, go ahead and let us know in the comments below. And remember, like, subscribe, and as always, have an awesome day.